Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 27. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at making our main menu actually function. Uh, we're going to add a little bit more to it and if we have time I would like to just touch up a little something on the skeleton in our other scene as well, ready for when we go ahead for the next tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, the main menu itself is fairly functional. We can click different things and our splash screen brings us to this main menu itself. But creating the main menu function script is pretty easy but it's, it's nice to have everything contained in one script so if we go to our scripts folder and go to our menu folder we have the game over respawning splash to menu so now let's create our main menu function script so right click create c sharp script i'll we'll have this as main menu function and let's open that up in visual studio so all we're going to do for this tutorial at least is get just a couple of buttons working. I'm sure I explained last time that to get options and credits and load game, we need to actually implement more in the development of the game before we can make those buttons work. But we can kind of have a placeholder ready for those buttons so we can kind of get it into place um, if, if we need to. Uh, another thing I do want to do with this as well is at the bottom here, uh, I want to have like a scrolling little thing along the bottom that has like updates of the game or, you know, something like that. So we can deal with that. So when this is opened up in Visual Studio, it's taking a, quite a while there. Sometimes it does for some reason. Uh, so we've worked with buttons before. We know how they function. Um, if you remember the game over option script, we had the public void respawn player and it loads that new scene. So we have to use the same sort of function here. And I'm pretty sure that we need to change a couple of uh, menu options in a couple of scripts, but we'll get around to that. So firstly, let's get rid of void start and void update. And let's start with the top button, which is new game. So public void new game button, open close bracket, open curly bracket and obviously the namespace we have to add in using unity engine dot scene management because we're using the scene manager at this point so scene manager dot load scene and in brackets let's find out what scene number it actually is to load us into the new game so file build settings and it is scene 001, so that is scene number three. So let's have three, close bracket, semicolon. Now let's uh, write ahead of time what we're going to use for load game. So public void load game button, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do is we will annotate here and put scene manager dot load scene and in brackets i'm just going to put a hash in there because that's something that we're going to change later on next let's have public void and the next button down is credits so it is credits button open close bracket open curly bracket and I'm going to copy the exact same line of code from the load game button because that's something we're going to change when we actually have the credits button itself. Uh, next, I'm going to have public void options button. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now this one, we're going to put an annotation here and just put a note to ourselves. UI for, uh, let's say, options to be built so the options themselves are going to exist within the main menu we're going to have like a little pop-up appear when we click the options button and that button is set ready for us to write the code in there when we get around to it uh, finally we have the quick game button so this one is going to be public void quit button open close bracket open curly bracket now for this one all we have to do is type in 
application dot quit up oh, close bracket semicolon and let's save the script now it's worth me noting at this point although we're going to make the uh, that method attached to the quit game button when we try it out the quit game button won't actually work the reason being is because the application is quitting not the engine so what it means is that when we build the game itself into a standalone application it will quit the game but it won't do it inside the engine when we test it. So let's now attach that script into our scene. So game object, create empty. And let's have this rename as functions. Just why not? Can I be called anything, I guess. Uh, so let's attach the script onto there. And now we've already dealt with how we use buttons. So let's quickly make these buttons function. So first one, new game, uh, click on the plus over here in the component, drag across functions, click on no function, main menu function, and this one is new game button. And then we do the same for all of the others. So I'm going to do this one and go no function, main menu function, and this one is load game button. So I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs now. I'm sure at this point you know how to actually make a button function. Uh, but what I am going to talk to you about now is how we are going to have like a little scrolly thing across the bottom here where we've currently got our version we're going to change that and we're going to have it as let's say update version 1.2 added something or other and it's going to scroll across the bottom and to do that we're going to use uh, some animation just because it's real quick and simple uh, so i'm just doing the final one now for quit uh, main menu and quit button and I'm going to save that now or rather play it and then save it I should say so as I said the quit button won't actually work yet because we've not built the game itself however if we do click new game it will take us eventually when it's loaded into that new game now you may get to a point where the lighting doesn't look quite right and I'm sure I've said it before at some point in the series there is a a little bug. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it has been ironed out yet. It may have done. In fact, it looks like it has been. Where we, if you load a scene, a new scene, I should say, within the game itself while you're testing it, the lighting won't work correctly. But when you build the game, the lighting does work correctly. But if it happens to you, don't worry about it. Your lighting is fine. Uh, so before we get to this scrolling across the scene, I think we should add in some main menu. Uh, music. Uh, let's go to audio folder, right click, create folder, and let's just have this as music. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to import this title music, which I will put on the website because it's just something I threw together quite a while ago. Um, and you can download it and use it if you want to. It's on a website, downloads and assets, uh, ultimate unity, beginners, and tutorial number 27. So I'm going to attach this to the main camera. And now let's, I'm going to play on awake and have it looped. I'm going to have the volume much lower because I think it is quite high. So I'm going to have 0.2, but I think I'll have the pitch a bit lower as well. So maybe 0.7. And let's see how this looks now with the sound. That's not too bad should do the trick. You don't necessarily have to use this exact music if you don't want to. You know, it's all down to you. It's personal preference, isn't it, really? Yeah. So there we go. There's some music for our main menu. So now let's get this info text working. So initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it anchored uh, Let's have it anchored to the right in the center and then I'm going to move it using the rec tool across out of view. So at this point, because it's anchored here, it will always be out of view no matter what. So I'm going to expand it and then I'm going to have, let's say, version 1.1 added music to the main menu added 
lighting to um, main scene. Um, improved performance or whatever you want. So then let's have that stretched to about there. So now what we need to do is establish how long we want it to be before it appears all the way across. Now your best way of doing it is probably having it scroll across over the course of maybe 30 seconds, 20 or 30 seconds. Because don't forget, a screen is quite wide. Generally, people play in 1080p, don't they, these days? Which means it's um, 1920 pixels all the way across, which is quite wide. So just keep that in mind when we're animating this. So let's go to animations. Let's go to the animation tab. Uh, click on create. Let's call this info scroll anim. And let's press the record button. Now, what we have to be careful of here is the starting point of this, because you have to keep in mind that it could start right here. I mean, you could have it start here and instantly scroll across. It's entirely up to you. I don't think it matters too much. Just be mindful of screen size when you're creating this animation. I cannot stress that enough. So for now, I'm going to have my animation start around about here. And you can see I've moved it and it has already set that keyframe there, which is perfectly fine. And I said I want to have it scroll over the course of about 20 to 30 seconds. So that is going to be, um, well, we're in 60 frames a second, so 10 seconds would be 600. So 1200 would be uh, 20. So let's do 1500 frames, which makes 25 seconds. So by that frame number, we want the X position to be all the way over here. We want everything to have scrolled across the screen. You can already see a kind of little preview of it, of how it's going to look when we scrolled it. So all I'm doing here is just changing the X position to probably somewhere around there. And then press the record button once again, back to project view. And let's make sure that the animation itself is actually scrolling. So we need to have loop time ticked. The animation is automatically added to it, so we won't have any problems there. So now let's press play and see how this looks. I think because of the screen size at the moment, it'll take just a second to scroll onto scene. There we go. And obviously you can change that as much as you need to. Yeah, that's good enough. And if we go to our scene view, we can see it getting to the end and then repeating. So back to the game view, it'll scroll once again. And I guess, like I say, it's all about the timing and realizing your screen size. Okay, so that's all right there. You just take the time to refine that as much as you need to. And you can always change the animation as you need to. So the other thing I wanted to um, work with was the order of the scenes that we have now because if we go to our splash screen oh yes we want to save our main menu of course uh, so here we just need to make sure that this will take us to our main menu this is all about testing your game now testing it is i cannot stress enough how much you need to test a game so this should take us to our main menu perfect so we know we don't need to worry about any scripts there. We know we don't need to worry about any scripts on the um, main menu because everything is good there for now. Uh, let's test the game over menu. So let's press play. And let's click the main menu button. Doesn't work because we need to build it. Respawn. So respawn takes us constantly to the game over scene. So. Let's now modify these buttons so they actually work. So on the script holder, let's go into the game over option script and let's add in the main menu button on there as well. So public void main menu button, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. We've already got our scene management uh, namespace up there. So let's just double check file 
build settings main menu is scene number one so let's take that line of code copy paste and let's change that to number one and obviously this respawn player takes us back to the main level and that is scene number three if you remember we had that earlier so let's change that to three let's save that script head back into unity so we know our respawn button now works so let's get our main menu button working so let's go to the canvas menu button plus drag over our script holder no function game over option and main menu button so now let's press play and check this scene out hopefully we should be able to click main menu and it takes us back to our main menu and now let's test out the respawn button so press play respawn and we respawn so now let's get ourselves uh, killed and when we do get ourselves killed if it doesn't take us to the game over scene which i suspect it won't we just need to make sure we modify the script correctly and two more i think it just takes us back to the splash screen so finally we have the last one to fix which is in enemies and i believe it is i don't think it is i think it's health monitor isn't it health monitor is the one that contains the scene management that's it so load scene zero and the scene which is actually game over is scene two so we just need to change that into scene two save and now every script which references a scene has been realigned and sorted so everything should work as intended now so uh next tutorial uh i want to work a little bit more oh yes we want to save that i want to work a little bit more with our skeleton i want a sequence of events to actually occur because right now the whole idea was getting our npc with uh, the axe and then tells us to go destroy the skeleton so we're going to have the skeleton wander around until that part of the game is triggered then he'll come and try and kill us and then we have to kill him once we've killed him we go back to our npc so this is the sequence of events that we're going to be working on from the next tutorial until then guys thank you very much for watching